The Union will assault Los Angeles in 48 hours. And we have... The five of you. Genlock may not be of use anymore. This will be the end of the line. Where you gonna run when the sky falls? If I'm gonna die, I'll go down fighting. Then show us. Akuma, Street Fighter Supreme Master of the Fist. Zhao Kahn, Conqueror of Mortal Kombat. Today, we'll find out which final boss reigns supreme. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. This is the Japanese kanji for heaven. Symbolic of the infinite sky above and the one who stands before it. And the last thing you'll ever see when you meet Akuma. Trained by Master Gotetsu at an early age, Akuma was practically born into the ways of fighting. He and his brother, Goken, were taught the form of Ansatsuke, literally meaning the assassination fist. You know, everybody says martial arts are all about meditation and being zen and all that other boring shit. Well, Ansatsuke ain't like the other guys. He combines judo, kenpo, and karate into a unique style that's all about murdering your opponent as fast as possible. Hell yeah! Unfortunately, the brothers' views on their training greatly differed. Goken rejected the violent methodology of the Ansatsuke, leaving to develop his own, less lethal variant of the form. Cause a style called Assassination Fist clearly needed less assassination. Yeah. Good thing Akuma was all about the real deal. He got so hardcore he started training to embrace the biggest martial arts secret out there. The Satsui no Hado. Ever present, ever malicious, this is a manifestation of literal killing intent. Only Gotetsu had ever mastered this dark power. So it's like the dark side of the force, but with karate? No, but... Sure. With the Satsui no Hado, Akuma gained great power at the cost of all compassion. This is the power of monsters. More like winners! Akuma got so good he challenged his master and killed him Sith style. With his ex-master's beads around his neck, he declared himself the new master of the Satsui no Hado. Obviously, this destroyed his relationship with Goku. The two brothers' destinies, let alone ideologies, were irreparably torn apart. But who cares when Akuma's perfected all the abilities of an overpowered Shoto character, and then some. He can rain down Go Hadoukens, teleport with the Ashura Senku, and take you for a whirl with the Tatsumaki Zankyukaku. And if Akuma ever wants to take things up a notch, he can summon forth the Kongo Kokoretsuzan, a geyser of pure energy strong enough to sink an island. With all this power, Akuma is among the toughest street fighters out there. Which says a lot when Hakan could loop himself up with enough oil to, get this, launch E Honda into orbit to headbutt a giant meteor into smithereens. Well, <clears throat> there's only one way to figure out the TNT of that. I've got the oil, Wiz. Get ready to launch. Oh, ah, uh, that's okay. Uh, I've already done the math. It's over 500 trillion tons. Oh, can we still do it, though? <sighs> fine. But did you know Akuma's also traded blows with some of the folks from Final Fight? I guess they're street fighters too. And the macho mayor Mike Hagar can pile drive people so hard, it makes an explosion you can see from space. Comparing the blast size to Earth's diameter, this explosion must have a yield of over 120 teratons of TNT. That might seem nuts, but hey, Akuma's done the same kind of thing. No wonder the only guys who can match him are badasses like Goken. Akuma would challenge Goken again and again, determined to prove his version of the Ansatsuken was superior. And apparently, he was right, as he defeated Goken with his signature technique, the Shun Goku Satsu. AKA the Raging Demon! With this, Akuma gives in to his killing intent, targeting a person's soul and killing their spirit with the weight of their sins. There is only one known way to survive it, emptying your own soul from your body. Fortunately, Goku knew exactly how to do that. Speaking of souls, this guy Nikali once tried to take Akuma's by devouring him. But not being in Devor, Akuma just blew him up instead. He's so powerful, defeating an opponent takes less effort than smacking a baby. No, not that Akuma would ever do that. No, I'm serious, he, he never would because despite the whole zero compassion thing, he has a weird code of honor. It's not compassion at all. To Akuma, 
Fighting is a sort of religion, and respecting the art is more important than anything. He'll spare those with an unfair disadvantage, and those whom he deems respects martial arts like him and can improve. In this way, he sort of became an unwanted mentor for Goken student Ryu. Hey, he's not a total killjoy. He did befriend Elena. Well, more like Elena befriended him, but... Whatever. But should you disrespect the art of fighting, Akuma will not hesitate to murder you, as disrespectfully as possible. Like when he jumped that a-hole and Bison so fast he killed him in one shot, and Bison was quick enough to tag this satellite laser beam. Following the beam speed at this angle, we can determine it was moving well over 5,000 times the speed of sound. But even with all that power, Akuma knew he'd never be at his best until he'd mastered the Satsui no Hado and become Akuma Blanco! Er, I mean Shin Akuma! As Shin Akuma, he possesses full control over the dark art, using it to its fullest extent. Only Gotetsu had ever mastered the Hado like this, because doing it is not just super difficult, but super dangerous. Right, the Satsui no Hado isn't just a form of energy, it is a sentient entity striving to push those who connect with it to fully commit to their rage. For when they do, they are no longer themselves. They become the Satsui no Hado itself. Yeah, like when it tried to take over Ryu and manifest it as its own evil person, Kage. Akuma truly believes the Hado is his best chance at becoming the ultimate world warrior, but he also knows that if he's not careful, he could lose himself to it. And when he does, the Hado will take his body and become the awesome, demonic Oni. Oh, he's super powerful. Oni's got all sorts of new moves and can easily overpower pretty much any other street fighter. In Japanese folklore, Oni are yokai, or demons, that spawn from the souls of the wicked upon death. However, in some legends, the most evil of humans can actually transform while still alive. Such as Shuten Doji, a drunken monk who gave in to malice, became an Oni, and was so powerful he could not die, even after he was decapitated. Not so different from this big bad blue boy. But hey, Akuma hasn't lost himself to the dark side of the Hado yet. The dude split apart mountains, taking a leisurely trip to the bottom of the ocean, and literally leaped into the land above the clouds. He just jumped, and he was there. Forget standing before heaven, this dude straight up flies above it. Akuma's lust for battle will likely never be sated, but his chosen path has been set. He will either be the world's deadliest man or its bleakest failure. Until then, he will never stop searching for a foe who can challenge the might of his Satsui no Hado. The realm of Outworld is a twisted, barren wasteland where only the strong survive. Definitely at the bottom of my list of places to go when I retire. And it's all thanks to the tyrannical ruler, Shao Kahn. Thousands of years ago, Shao Kahn was an advisor to the Dragon King, Onaga. Until Onaga took a permanent nap when Kahn poisoned him and claimed the throne all his own. Now that's what I call climbing the political ladder. With an army of demonic Tarkatans and four-armed Shokans at his beck and call, Shao Kahn began conquering and merging other realms with Outworld, including the once idyllic paradise of Edenia. After which, he hooked up with Edenia's queen, Sindel. But his conquest didn't just win him a traitorous milk. The crafty bastard also picked up a ton of awesome powers. Khan is a deceptive leader who isn't afraid to resort to, quite frankly, dickish methods to achieve his devious goals. He's basically a wrestling heel in the form of an otherworldly invader, right down to dressing like a male stripper. And despite living on a completely different plane of existence, he's somehow mastered two Chinese martial arts, Daizu and Liu Wei, both of which prioritize fast and aggressive strikes to overwhelm opponents. But Khan's real bread and butter is his mastery of magic. He can shoot fireballs, create portals, make you his telekinetic yo-yo, bounce projectiles back to sender, and conjure his signature hammer whenever he wants. With his wrath hammer, Khan can crush even the strongest combatants. With a K! To pieces with his brutal fatalities. But perhaps his most iconic ability is taking souls. With just a wave of his hand, he can dine on some fine soul food, courtesy of whatever sap crossed his path. Khan went far with these abilities and it wasn't long before his conquering eye caught sight of a little planet called Earthrealm. But first, his forces had to rack up enough wins in. Hit the music, Wiz. Uh, we don't have the licensing rights. Mortal Kombat! 
it. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna stop there so we don't get sued. Outworld almost had the 10 consecutive wins needed to merge with Earth. But the goody two shoes monk Liu Kang just had to ruin it all. But Khan just said, uh, screw it, and invaded Earth anyway. The moment Khan set foot on Earth, he stole the souls of nearly every human being on the planet. Then physically merged Earth Realm and Outworld into one big melting pot of conquest. The exact meaning of merging realms is a little vague, but from Mortal Kombat 3's intro, we do know that it transforms the planet into part of Outworld itself. But even when he's not literally folding worlds together, Khan is always a threat to behold, far superior to most of the other combatants. He's a cocky asshole, but damn he sure knows how to get stuff done. He's one-shotted Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade, survived being impaled, broke Kotal Khan's back, and has consistently surpassed the likes of the Thunder God, Raiden. Who, oh, being all thundery, is as fast as lightning. Khan could even hold his own when Raiden held the power of all the Elder Gods. For context, the Elder Goddess Cetrion can grow as large as a planet and fire this hyper-fast laser, which, comparing its speed to the curvature of the Earth, can smite mortals at 2% the speed of light. Oh, you know you're a big shot when actual gods think you're a pain. Look at him go! Don't mistake powerful with invincible. Khan's might is only matched by his arrogance. Yeah, he really does love to hear himself talk, even when it leaves him totally open. I guess he doesn't consider the consequences of his constant taunting. Is that your best? I, I thought it was funny. You suck. Uh, moving on. Even if it can get the better of him, Khan has proven his arrogance isn't completely unfounded. After ages of conflict, all of the combatants fought in a final clash of good versus evil. And Khan emerged as the last man standing. It was there that he defeated Blaze, an all-powerful elemental who threatened every realm in existence. Luckily for the good guys, Raiden had a way to basically go back in time and try to stop Khan from winning in the first place. That's right, Khan was such a big threat, the only way to beat him was a complete do-over. And even with that victory now a non-existent memory, Shao Khan will never relent. Even death has never stopped this conqueror from his ultimate quest to rule everything. I am Khan of Outworld. Vacate my throne or I'll soak these sands with your blood. <laughs> All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, if you're one the kind of confidence it'd take to rule out world, check out Blue Chew. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Here's a life hack for you. Confidence will take you far. And that's why Blue Chew delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis in chewable tablet form right to your door. Yep, and did we mention you can get Blue Chew's tablets at a fraction of the cost of those other guys? Getting ready to go is simple. Just sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. Plus, it's all done online, which means no more awkward conversations with your doctor or waiting in line at the pharmacy. And you can take Blue Chew anytime day or night so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for you. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code BATTLE at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code BATTLE to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. Thanks for sponsoring the show, Blue Chew. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Die 1000 death! You dare interrupt my tournament. Another fool seeking my throne. I only seek your life. That's your best, weak, pathetic fool. 
With the power of the Satsui no Hado, Akuma was a unique challenge for Shao Kahn. Yeah, like how he resisted Nikali suggests Kahn couldn't have just yanked his soul away so easy. And Akuma's level of power was nothing to scoff at either. Akuma's biggest hits were way stronger than you'd think, blasting apart meteors and making explosions seen from space. But Khan survived blasts from beings even more powerful than that, like the Elder Gods, who can grow to the size of planets. And remember, Blaze? He could destroy all the realms, and even did in one of his endings. And while Blaze's story ending isn't canon to the Mortal Kombat universe in and of itself, it is still an example of what could happen in canon. And Khan whooped that red hot ass! While we do not have an exact time frame for Blaze's destruction of the realms, destroying Earthrealm alone would require at least overcoming Earth's gravitational binding energy, or about 47.8 zettatons of TNT. Over 300 million times the power of the Terratone explosion from Akuma's lineup! And keep in mind, when Khan merges realms, he is literally morphing an entire planet into Outworld itself. This means it makes sense he could defeat Blaze, because he already commands a similar level of power. But I know what you're thinking. What about the Raging Demon, Akuma's awesome finishing move? Shao Kahn has racked up more than enough sin in his time for it to totally murder his soul. There was always a possibility that Akuma would get a lucky hit in with the Shongoku Satsu. However, given Khan can keep up with the likes of Elder Gods and their space lasers, he could certainly keep pace with Akuma. And sure, Khan's an arrogant son of a bitch, but he knows when to get serious. If his arrogance was that big of an issue, he wouldn't have conquered so many realms. Both Akuma and Khan were among the best of the best in their respective worlds, but this match ultimately came down to who would land their killing blow first. Shao Kahn's overwhelming power, mystical abilities, and treacherous strategies were enough to claim this victory. Outworld's Emperor was the only one who could surpass Akuma. The winner is Shao Kahn. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned, we'll be jumping into the next matchup next week. But you can always get more Death Battle right now by clicking one of those boxes right over there and by downloading the battle music linked down below.